So this is a Vader view of an, a D4 Aurelian Soul player. He's pretty much a one-trick pony. His name is George Aurelian Sultan. Um, which name do you want to go by? Uh, I'll go by George. All right, George. So um, what do you think the largest problems are to work on either in this VOD or specifically in general? Uh, my decision-making and my lack of ability to roam as I used to. I originally got to D2, and that's probably because I roamed a crap ton, but I just stopped doing that right now. Uh, also, my um, awarding isn't really good, so that needs uh, working on as well. Okay. Is there anything else in general, like wind conditions or other uh, things you would deem that are really important that you don't know about? or uh, I don't know much about wind conditions. So okay. I'll definitely need to go with that as well. Cool. And um, maybe, uh, well, yeah, we discussed it earlier, but it's a good topic, getting the will to play. Okay. So, awesome. I won't speak to any of these yet because these kind of are yeah. more situational. Yeah. The only one that I will begin to speak to are... Mm, Actually, no, I'll speak to these two right now. I lied. Because okay. these you can do before a game. So, well, really, you can do any of them before a game, but these ones are more prominent. So, yeah. in this game specifically, what do you think your win condition is? Uh, is to focus on the bot lane because Draven can heavily snowball the game, especially with a zone of support. Uh, with a Sejuani as well, can be really hard to take down. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking if I try and camp bot, I can get John and MF ahead and everything will be sorted. But on the flip side, if Echo can get hit ahead, it'll be pretty problematic for our team, okay. even with the Janna. So you did do um, most of it. These are the three general things that you should break win conditions down into. And this is like at the start of the game. And then it becomes dynamic um, as the game goes through. So the three most important things are um, our win conditions. And then after that, it's their... Oh, shoot. That's not straight. Uh, their win conditions. And then what do I do? So you did address those three points. Uh -huh. Um and that's really important because if you look at it, all this is at the start of the game. Um, mm -hmm. Your win conditions at the start of the game are to group up and 5v5, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I can go to erase this now because if you look, Jace, he's not necessarily a 5v5 champion, but it doesn't matter because the rest of your team makes up for it. You have Kane, who prefers team fights, you have Aurelian, who prefers team fights and rotations, you have Misfortune, mm -hmm. who prefers team fights, and you have Janna, who prefer, uh, prefers team fights. So even though one guy isn't really a team fighter, you have four team fighters. So this means the bulk mm -hmm. of your team is team fights, so you can either 4-1 or 5v5, or you can even 1-3-1 if it's you and Aurelian on a side lane, or sorry, you and uh, Jace, and then like rotations. The key here is the rotations if you're doing a 1-3-1 or a 4-1. Because if you look at their team comp, they have Echo, who's pretty much one of the best split pushers in the game. Uh, mm -hmm. Talon, who is, again, one of the best split pushers in the game. And then a decent amount of disengage between the rest of their team comp. If you see, so Sona, Draven, and mm -hmm. Sejuani all have, like, stop abilities. So Sejuani alt, Draven alt, uh, Sona alt. So Draven E. Yeah, sorry, Draven E. Um, so their team comp is 1-3-1, one one, where you have these few options, the 4-1, 5-5, mm -hmm. um, e and 1-3-1. One one. So judging by that, or like from a standpoint now, we should have won the game based on that. If you play properly. Cause we, yeah, because we have more options to win. Yes, if you play properly okay. is the key here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And... Now we'll break it down even further. So th you have three viable options for team comps, assuming you allocate them properly. This is like the key here, um, mm -hmm. where they only have one. So they're forced into this binary play style where you can then 
counter it. So how do you counter one through one? Well, it's a uh, um, grouping as five, and mm -hmm. then forcing things. That's how you counter that. Um, now, if we look at early game, mid game, and late game, which does your team have? Uh, definitely Sol because he can push and roam very effectively, and not many can stop that. Uh, and Kane is a good early game jungler. Uh, and Jace is pretty oppressive early on as well because of his range. Okay. MF not so much because she's pretty weak early. So when I look at your team comp, what I see is something that you need to start recognizing as well. This is how you realize when your spikes are. Jace, lane priority. He mm -hmm. has lane priority. Kane. He's going to power farm. And he can even invade on Sejuani. Yeah. Okay. Rillian, lane priority. Misfortune and Janna. These guys will probably lose lane. Or just be neutralized, so they won't really have mm -hmm. priority because they have Draven and Sona, who are pretty oppressive. Mm hmm Okay. So, with this in mind, where is your strong side? Definitely top half of math. Okay. So this is your strong side. So, this means you should play to your strong side. Wherever your jungler is, wherever he's power farming, and wherever Jace is, which is going to be top. And with that, you also need to try to protect them but you don't try to get them ridiculously far ahead mm -hmm. in general um th this use this more as an example right because i know you could say like oh well um they have driven sona so we need to shut them down or whatever yeah and okay. that argument is valid as well but the i'm just trying to teach you in general to apply it to the most amount of games possible um, okay yeah. so just keep that a little bit in mind so and, instead of using shut down use protect yeah Basically, all right. Um, basically, a lot of people try to play to their like weak side and say, oh, we need to get them ahead mm -hmm. so that they're not weak. But what if you already have a lane that is inherently ahead? You can just snowball off of that one. Yeah, that sounds more logical. <laughs> it's, just, it's just kind of like a different mentality that some people um, don't really have. Yeah. So... Um, okay. Their win conditions are one through one. Our win conditions are all those. Okay, so now when are we strongest? Misfortune Janna, they're kind of not that great in lane. Not that they're bad, they're just not that great. Mm -hmm. And we have three relatively okay laners. Or, sorry, um, top jungle mid is relatively strong. So, mm -hmm. if you compare this to what they have, they have... Lost lane priority top, but he's just going to clear. Mm -hmm. They have a weak jungler, weak in terms of like clear health and all that. Yep. They have an AD mid who should not have priority. They have a bottom lane that will have priority. So these guys are the guys you worry about. And the other two, or other three, are kind of useless. Or should be useless. <laughs> in theory, if you play it right, yes. Yeah. So, okay. with all this in mind, if you are not invading Sejuani's jungle with your jungler, or ganking top lane, or um, you know, getting a ward down here, and then going somewhere up here, you're kind of trolling a little bit. Because mm -hmm. topside is probably very punishable for the most part. So... Realistically, what can you do? Well, you can roam bottom early. Um, because you can't really kill Echo like under turret. And Jay should have him pretty much under turret for the first few levels. Mm -hmm. So you don't really you can't really stay in mid either because Talon will kill you. So bottom should yep, be a place that's... to go early. 
Now, what about levels like 7, 8, 9? Um, you could still go bottom, but it's probably better to go top towards the winning lane and maybe invade Sejuani's red buff with your jungler. And something like that takes communication. Yep. But all those ideas that I just got, obviously they change as the state of the game continues and all that. But you see, mm -hmm. the way that I got all those ideas was looking at the champions that we have, looking at the champions that they have, and identifying when they're strong and when they're weak. All right. I understand. So I should be looking at team comps and general gist of things as well. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, and seeing what I can do. Yeah. So if I apply this to a different champion, and it'll be very clear with this. Okay. This is basic jungle tracking and formulating a plan to win. So, mm -hmm. I'm playing Talia. Okay? So I'm Talia. Talia is basically Aurelian Soul. Yep. So, a lot of this will be applicable. I push in the first wave. I know for a fact that my jungler is starting here. Because my jungler starts here. And that's yep. either one of those two camps. So I know where he is. Okay. This means that my jungler is going to be here at three minutes. And this also means that my jungler is going to be here around four to five minutes. Because that's when these camps are going to respawn. Yep. Okay. So, what does this mean when I take into account with their jungler? I know their jungler started here because their bottom lane comes to lane, comes to lane late. Their top lane doesn't leash and their mid lane doesn't leash here. So that means their bottom lane leashed. So this means that their bottom lane will be here around three minutes. And this also means that their jungler will be here around four to five minutes. So I can communicate with the jungler to, you know, do a cheeky play on their blue buff. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take the exact same team comps. I'm just going to substitute Aurelian Soul with Talia because this is actually something that I did the other day. Okay. So I took Ghost. And this is how I played the lane. So I push the wave level one. And then I go and I get a ward here. Now my team will know for a fact when their jungler is on red. Because they're not doing this jungle tracking that I'm doing. Right? So I know exactly mm -hmm. where the jungler is at all times. Well, my team doesn't, so I just want to give them information. It's kind of a waste of award, but not really, because your team probably mm -hmm. didn't know that. So it's a waste of award for you, but not for your team. I'll try and do that every game. Cool. As well. So, next wave. I push in. Okay. I push in the next wave. Now, in this little dime downtime, I'm sitting here... I'm sitting here, wherever the jungler isn't, or mm -hmm. supporting my jungler, or whatever I'm doing. Just something in that slight amount of downtime. Yep. Basically just not wasting time, just sitting mid doing nothing. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then, I go mid again, and I push the wave. Now that's four waves, so what time is it in game about now? Um, roughly four or five minutes. Waves start at about 140. Four waves take 30 seconds to get here. It's about that time. So, yep. what does this mean? This means that my jungler is going to be here. And my jungler is Kane. And their jungler is going to be here. And their jungler is Sejuani. If we force a 4v4, we will win. Because we have a stronger early game jungler. Or um, a fighter, per se. Whereas a mm -hmm. tank doesn't really win those. So, what do I do? I push in one more wave. And then I rotate this way. I get here, I ghost, I go bottom, and we kill bottom. Neither junglers come. But my rotation caused us to get a kill bottom. Two kills. Uh -huh. The game, in theory, is now over after that point. Because they are further ahead and I should be able to assist them get even further ahead instead of 
it being the chance where, oh, Draven's going to kill my bot lane type thing. Uh, so let's say that my jungler came and their jungler came. We would still win. And that's why that the, uh, that's why that play is okay and it's good because we know that we'll win. But now let's switch this scenario a little bit and my jungler is clearing his blue buff at, let's say, seven minutes and their jungler started topside. That means he's going to be here at 745. So if I go bottom at 745 and my jungler is stealing raptors at that time, well, that means their jungler comes down. It's a um, yeah. 3v2 where the jungler comes late. They might be able to turn it around it. because their mid laner will come and now it's a 4v3. Yep. And then you lose the play. So, all that play stemmed from me actively controlling my minion waves the way that I wanted it mm -hmm. and thinking about the jungler and who could impact the fight. Okay, so you saw all that, right? All that? Okay, yep. well, I started planning that as you saw at 1.30. Yep. Or rather, before the game started. This is when everything started. And it didn't actually come into fruition until five minutes. I planned four minutes in advance for that play. I, I, I gotta start doing that then. <laughs> do you do that as a really soul? No. Okay. That's the kind of stuff you need to start doing. Because yep. that's how you get a play that works and that will get you ahead. Especially on a roaming champion. Yes. You should plan okay. your roams at least a minion wave in advance. So, right. let's say you're playing top lane. This is a little bit um, different than playing really mid, but you can apply a lot of skills. So, you're playing top lane. You are Jace versus Echo. This works. Mm -hmm. Or, I can substitute that for anybody with any type of priority. Um, so, like, let's say you're playing Renekton into Camille. You have priority yeah. for a little bit. So, what can you do? Well, wave comes in at five minutes. Okay, just an example time. That's not actually wave time, but we'll yep. just say it is. So, uh, yeah. wave comes in. I'm Renekton as yellow, and Camille is blue. Okay, so what I do is I force Camille back by standing here, which means that Camille has to stand here because she can't fight me. And so that means, presence. yes, my yeah. minion wave will start to slow push. Mm -hmm. Before this wave happened, I got a ward here so that I could set this up and be safe. Okay, so I can't be ganked because I have a ward and I'm zoning her. This creates a slow push. All right, I'm happy. Now, 530 comes. Now there's, let's say... Five minions of mine and two of hers, and they're about at that point still because I didn't push the wave. I just let it freeze. Mm -hmm. So now the extra reinforcements come in. Six and six. So now I have 11 minions, and she has seven minions. All right, well, what do I do? I hard push the wave while Camille is still afraid of me. So now I have, like, ten minions. She has, like, one. All right, cool. Look at this giant mini wave that I just created. And then I push it in, and now it's here. So now, she has a mini wave here. She has to answer this to respect her turret. So, I go in, and I get a deep ward. Or I go, and I gank mid. Because Camille is stuck answering this wave. Because of the mini wave that I set up. Yeah. So, this play... We say it started at 5. The next wave comes at 5.30. And then let's say the roam doesn't happen. Like the the actual getting this ward or getting a kill mid doesn't happen until 5.45. I set this up still a whole minute in advance. Yep. You have to count this ward as well. So that's like the 4.45. Uh -huh. That's how you set up a good play. It's not just... Hey, um... I want to do this now because I think it's a good idea. It's no, I planned this out. I, I made yeah. sure that my conditions fit. And this will work. 
this will work. And if it doesn't work, that sucks. But yeah. I don't lose anything if it doesn't work. I was only creating advantages. Mm -hmm. Or at least cool. trying to. Yeah, trying to. Okay. So those are the type of plays that you need to set up. And that's yeah. where decision making really comes in. Because you have to recognize um, the enemy team comp, and then how do you play against it? So if their bottom lane is Caitlyn Zyra, and then their jungler is... Um, I don't know, Elise who started topside. Do you really want to gank bottom at three minutes? No, I don't. Probably not. <laughs> so that would just add disastrous. But I'm sure you've done something like that before. I probably have, yeah. Because you didn't think about the team comps. Nope. Okay, so decision making is literally thinking about every aspect of the game. Um, All right. And I know that's really weird. Because you're, you, like, most people are like, oh, I think about the game when I play. You know, I think about last hitting or whatever. But do you really think about it and how you apply it in the next five minutes? Probably no, not. I don't. <laughs> okay. Cool. So um, that, that was kind of a quick overview of win condition and then um, a little bit of decision making. Does that kind of just at least introduce a base to it? Yeah, it does. Okay, cool. So now we can actually start the bot then. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have any other questions before, like just like that, uh, just general stuff. Uh, no, the other one, but that can be done at the end of the game, end of the body. Okay. Uh, you have it written down, right? You said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have it okay. I just don't want you to forget, and then, yeah. No, okay. that's not fun, yeah. So. We'll go ahead and speed through a little bit. And you are a roaming champion. So, mm -hmm. oh, geez. Um, it got rebound. That's unfortunate. Is it time shift? Um, It's not uh, slowing down, so. Oh, it's not <laughs> All right, we'll go back though. Unfortunate. Okay. So, are you AFK? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. If you're not AFK, why are you here? Uh, because. Uh, I don't know. I'm retarded, I guess. Okay, Leon needs so... to be like in the middle of the lane, showing my presence. Yes. So he doesn't do that. So that he does not come all the way forward like this, because look what he can do now. He can just W me. He can just W the wave. Uh-huh. And now he has I priority, need... because his W... It's coming back on cooldown. It's a nine second uh -huh. cooldown, right? But now he's mm -hmm. able to get priority earlier and he can just walk at you. And then do it again. Yeah. Uh, here, one second. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna time you out for a minute because uh, my mod does not have a learning disability. So uh, thanks for that one. Anyway. Um, he got priority because you are sitting AFK under turret. Yep. And I should be in the middle of the lane showing my presence. Yeah. So I know you've seen me play Echo before. You'll yep. notice that when I'm Echo, I'm especially never AFK. I am sitting right here, exactly like the Talon just did, at 130. <laughs> because I'm ready to shove this wave as soon as possible. Because I'm a skip lane champion. I'm a champion that doesn't want to be in lane. I want to push. I want to mm -hmm. just not exist because I know that I will lose. I will get harassed out. You are a really in soul. You are the exact same thing. And so is Talon. He mm -hmm. loses every single lane ever. Almost ever. You lose every single lane ever pretty much. Like if you just yep. fight like straight up, you just lose because part of your champion's ability, like the power of the champion is built into his E. 
which means you have one less ability to trade. Yeah, and fight. Exactly. So, yeah. So you do not want to lose minion priority because now, look, you can just step up and you can't fight because he has all these casters. Mm -hmm. So And he, he now yeah. has mid priority. And now he has mid priority. This means he can go get a ward if he wants to. This means that you just don't punish him level one, whatever. Mm -hmm. So just try to avoid situations like this because this is just very easily preventable. And I think he does have mid priority for like a good level one to two. So okay, I so can't now. Step forward. So now you are stuck here. Yeah. Because of that level one mistake, and he has a pushing wave. You cannot kill these three minions and his next six without burning literally your entire mana bar. I don't play a really in soul, but I know that, right? Like, yep. yep. Okay. I know. So you know for a fact that if you try to clear all these next minions, you will burn your entire mana bar. And if you burn your entire not. mana bar, that means he has wave priority again. So, this amount of distance just screwed your entire early game until you can neutralize a, neutralize a wave. So how do you neutralize a wave? Well, you either burn your entire mana bar and clear it, or you let him push in, that way it resets. But yep. if you let it sit here, normally this is great. You want to freeze, you want to do whatever. Mm -hmm. But, but um, I'm on running soul. But you're a really in soul. So you don't want to do this. So all this advice, it does apply to other champions as well, but it depends on if you're trying to freeze, harass, zone versus roam. And when your yep. objective is to roam, you freezing here does not work. Nope, doesn't make sense. <laughs> it does work in that you'll be able to build a slow push, but if you're not able to hold them there, i.e. level one, you can't really hold them there, then... It doesn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, see that that was just twenty percent of your mana mm -hmm. for those three minions. Okay, so why are you here? Because he can just throw another W at me. Because that minion over there's level still low HP. Okay. That melee one on you. So you're right and you're wrong. This minion's going to die which means that you're going to get queued if you step up. But mm -hmm. right now he's level one. So five seconds ago, why are you there? Because you let him auto attack this minion. Yep. Why did you let him auto attack it to get it lower? Because I didn't punish him for it. Because you didn't punish him. So this means that if I rewind just five seconds, um, it'll be a little more than five seconds. Um, okay, so, right here, why do you back up? This this was the thing that I was just saying. Instead, yeah. you should be here trying to get priority so that you don't get level 2 cheesed. You're, not, you're probably not going to get full priority, but you can hit this minion, that way you're both 2 at the same time. In which uh -huh. case you kind of neutralize the level 2 cheese. Not really, because he's still Talon and you're still really in soul. That fact isn't going to change. But you don't get zoned off of minions like you're about to. Because I yeah. like I didn't need to see it to know that it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I like get very scared of Talon for some reason. I don't know why. Like His level 2 just scares me, I guess. Yeah, Not his level 2 is spooky. Like, that is a thing. But you can still prevent mm -hmm. his level 2 by you getting yeah. level 2 first, by not getting priority. Because then he can't engage on you for a good 30 seconds. Okay, so and last thing and turret. Close. Good try. Okay, so you are a ranged champion. And he is a melee champion, and he is up 2 CS on the second wave. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is 2 CS? Oh, it's only 2 CS. Well, 16 CS is a kill. So he has just generated 20% of a kill on you. I know that math's a little off. Yeah. But I don't know what minions you got. Because if you got like two casters and he got two extra melees, that is about correct. Yeah. So a small thing makes a big difference. Small thing, big difference. Because his could be, let's say, uh forty three gold, whereas yours is say only um thirty four. Again, 
Very small difference. But now you have to take in mind that he has plus two more CS. So now he probably has, let's say, 43 plus 34, 77, where you only have 34. Mm -hmm. And now if this trend continues for two more waves, he has a really big advantage. That's why when you people just generated are, the lead, you yeah. generate a lead from me just standing AFK. Yes. All that stemmed from 130. So when when people in LCS are like, oh man, this matchup's brutal. Um, he's down 20 CS. That's a big thing because that's literally just like killing your laner. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, he's only quote unquote up 20 CS, but guess what? He's had lane priority that entire time which means he's gotten vision control for his team, which means he's roamed with his jungler, all that kind of stuff. It's a lot of just small things that people don't realize because right now, Sejuani could be right here. Mm -hmm. In theory, invading, she could be. And Talon would have first rotation if his jungler was invading because he wouldn't be standing here, he'd be standing here. And then he can get there first because he's just going to W this wave, then you miss the wave and then he goes with the jungler the wave pushes out then he freezes here you lose because mm -hmm. you just missed six more minions all the experience of the six minions where he didn't miss six he missed let's say three and then they kill your jungler and the game's basically over from that point so this lane priority that you have willingly given up could be very very bad imagine if talon right now he pushes in this wave um and then he walks bottom with his jungler because the jungler is bottom side. And they four man your your bottom at three twenty. Your bottom lane is going to tilt off the planet, and you're going to lose. That's basically GG. Yeah. Does is that what happens? Uh no. Okay. That's not what <laughs> um. Because this, this is the kind of stuff I live for in mid lane. I'm like, oh, I'm playing Talia, and he gave me priority. All right, my jungler started top side. I'm going bottom at three thirty. Because their jungler started here, so that means he's going to be here. He's top side. My jungler is bottom side. Oh, this is a spicy four-man gank at level three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now, that well, one doesn't stem from 130, but that one stems from, let's say, right now, 240. I can actively realize, okay, um, he's letting me get priority. That means in 30 seconds, I can go bottom. And my jungler will be ready as well because she's at blue buff. So that's a decision yeah. that you would make regarding wave manipulation, wave management. Mm -hmm. It's still a decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm not exactly sure what you want me to cover with decision making. Is that the type of stuff that you're looking for? Or, um... Well, it's just this game is specific. I was a bit lost after uh, I got a lead, basically. Okay. So Cool. Um, because when... Sometimes terms are just very general, and yeah, you yeah. are a higher ELO player, so I don't know exactly what decision making you're looking for. So that's why mm -hmm. I'm just asking to clarify. Um, okay. So we'll look again after this wave as um, what your CS count is. Okay, so you get her ass. You don't have wave priority. That's fine. You'll be able to hold this wave here, which isn't ideal, but you just did something. You just harassed. You didn't give him free priority. He took wave priority with these two minions, but you you traded 60% of his health for that wave priority. Mm -hmm. So this is a good trade. This is good what you just did because now you can freeze him out here. And that's different from the situation earlier where you guys were both 100% health that means he has absolute priority because you have done nothing to counter his wave priority. But this counteracting of his health bar for the wave priority means that he can't just go bottom for free. And yeah, now you can deny him from CS. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you see how the two situations are similar but very vastly different. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, because this, what you just did, that's great. Now you deciding to keep the wave here is absolutely fine if you want to do so. If not... It doesn't really matter if you push or freeze here as long as you accurately ping Talon where he's going. 
So if you mm -hmm. see him going this way, you can just missing ping him, like a lot of times, and then you have overall done your job. Because you're threatening kill pressure on him right now if he goes for the wave. Yeah. Or you can push and roam and he can't counter it as well. Your call now. It depends on just how the state of the lane is. So are you looking at your top lane? Probably not, no. Okay. You should try to at least hover here just for a, a brief yeah. second. Use F keys if you need to. Otherwise, just click here. Are you looking at your bottom lane? Uh, Probably not as well at the time. Okay. So... In the in the span of the next five to ten seconds, you should be looking at one of your side lanes, because you will be able to, um, you'll be able to make the educated decision of do I want to permanently freeze here and zone him, or do I want to go impact the side lanes? Because oh, haha, a really a skip lane champion, nice meme, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. this is the type of stuff that you can do as well, even though you're a really in soul. Mm -hmm. So with the state of all the lanes right now, which one do you think is the best to do? So that's top lane. Mm -hmm. This is bottom lane. This is mid lane. Uh, Draven looks 20% HP right nearly. So, but Sejuani is right there. So do you know Sejuani is there? Like, actively in-game? No, I don't. Okay, so then don't use that information. So, okay. Uh, I know where Kane is, though. So, I can use that guess to go top lane. Okay. Regarding yeah, that, where Kane is. That's a great decision. You could go top because, look, Echo has priority right here. Mm -hmm. Somehow, your Jace has lost priority in this lane. And he's probably going to be pushing. The next wave's coming up. How do you know that? You look at the minimap. And then you'll see, okay, the wave will be here. I can go gank top with Kane. Yep. But That's something... There, he's on like... <laughs> what? He's on 2 HP. Yeah, but they're, they're, their yeah. team doesn't know that. Yeah, true. Like, right now, Echo is actually in a huge threat of being ganked. Yeah. Uh, Even if yeah. you just blow Echo's flash, you do really, really large impact on top lane. So anyway, these are decisions that you need to make. You just have to choose one because ultimately yeah. you pick one, you learn from it. It doesn't really matter which one you pick as long as you execute it according to what you're doing. So if your goal is I want to zone Talon, you better not kill these two minions in future games. I don't know what you're going to do now. If your goal is to roam top, you better start killing these two minions to get priority. And that's the type of stuff oh. you need to think about to make those active plays that I described earlier. Alright. Cool. Okay, so we know Sejuani's bottom now. You should peek and check her HP like this and then go back. Mm hmm I mean, I think I should be going up to him and pressuring him a bit. Yeah, so this is good. You just don't want to give it away too early. Yeah. Okay, so this is a zoning queue at very least, okay? And we can't chase because we know their jungler is yeah. bottom side. Okay. I'm going to kill from this. Oh. So I'm going to rewind this. Oh. <laughs> Was that the fat finger? Uh, no. Okay. I, so. What I tried to do was, because, uh, you know, the Q pops as um, it goes out of range. Yeah, you were trying to extend the range. What? I'll try and extend the range, yeah. That's what okay. I tried to do. So, Kane is going to come mid right now. Yeah, and he pinged that as well. So, why are you here? Because I'm scared of his all in. Okay. But Why are you not he here? Ends, then... Probably because I'm an idiot. Do you know why you should be here? So he can't run away to the right. Okay, so we know that Sejuani is bottom. 
But we know the time frame in which she was bottom. We know she went bottom in the last 10 seconds. And she's just leaving the gank now. Which means she's still here. Mm -hmm. And that is where... Okay, so you see how I, I, I... It's kind of hard for you to see, so let me just go to the map. I purposefully drew that she would be about here by now. Yeah. Because this is where I would predict she would be at this current moment. We don't actually know she's here. But I would predict that she's here. Okay. So. If you're here, does Sejuani impact you when she's all the way down there? No. Exactly. So. You know the lane seesaw, right? Mm hmm. So if you're here, they're probably here. Probably. If I'm on the right. No, if you right. go here, they're going to walk here. If you go here, go the they're going to walk yeah. here. So, if you actively take this movement, they you know that there's a high chance that they will walk here. Which makes this gank easier like this. And it stops him from running over to such one as well. Yes. You are effectively zoning him because you will mm -hmm. chunk him out. And if he jumps on you, he pretty much dies. Because yeah. Kane will have a larger impact and sooner than Sejuani will. I mean, I'd do that with Zed as well. Like, I know all Zeds tend to look into go in at level 3 for some reason. I don't know why, but... Uh, I literally ping my jungler and type in chat. Come mid, he's gonna all in me, level 3. <laughs> they're like, okay. And then we get a kill off it and it's like... We were great. And then I get a loot, so you know. Okay, so you see how this gank could be improved by st going yeah. here. Okay, so this is okay. actively something you would do now. So, he would be here now. And if he's here now, you can use your expansion, and your stars will be about here. Mm -hmm. Only only this side, obviously. Yeah. Um, which means that he's going to either, one, step in, or two, step out. And by that time... Kane would already be here. Kane walks in like this, or he doesn't walk in at all. He just walks. And yep. then if Talon jumps the wall, Kane's around. Then he can follow him. If yeah. Talon doesn't jump the wall, he dies. Um, but pretty much, you don't set up this gank easily for your jungler. You just make it harder because Talon is going to walk this way or this way. Yeah. Whereas if you were here, he would have to walk either this way or this way. Big difference. I know it's only like how many this is probably like what, three Teemos? Yeah. But watch how impactful three Teemos are for the rest of this fight. Okay, so. He stays on your side, he steps in your stars. Yeah. Okay. Now he flashes. Look at this distance. This looks very familiar to three Teemos. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. We get it? Talon jumps over. That's fine. You did a good Q because this prevents him from going here towards his turret, obviously, because it, it mm -hmm. this blocks here. So he either has to go this way or this way. He cannot go this way. So now he's forced into Sejuani, but he's 40% health. You guys have an advantage. Yep. Okay. So you back up. He wants to go. This is kind of unfortunate, mm -hmm. but you should win this fight. Because of the advantage that we just created by you zoning him here. Because now he's only 40% health. And that win condition that I identified earlier, Aurelian plus Kane will beat a 40% Talon and a jungler that's full health. And let's say she's below full health. Then you win harder because Kane is full health. Yeah. You don't know Sejuani's health necessarily. But you do know your jungler's health. Yeah. Okay, so you should be closer to Kane. So you should already be here. Huh. That looks kind of like three Teemos again. Like, obviously not exactly, yeah, but yeah. see how this small amount of distance means a huge, huge, huge in these fights. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to follow him because I didn't know how much HP Zedron he had, of course, but uh, I wasn't confident that we could win that fight because of a counter gank, of course. Like, he can just turn, and Tan can just turn and just going on me so with the Sejuani but you know 
But he I'm can't. Nothing. He can't walk into you with forty percent health and no flash. True. And I still have the exhaust. <laughs> Okay, at this point, you know what Talon's going to do. Mm -hmm. Sejuani's going to go here. Talon's going to go here. So you have to make a decision. Which one do you want? Which one are you more likely to kill? Sejuani. Sejuani. So you can't really kill Talon that reliably unless you're really good with stars. And I know you're in Aurelian main, but... You got to be like a god to get this kill because mm -hmm. you have to do so much pathing and math in your head that I highly doubt you'll be able to make all of it happen because this star already passed him. Mm -hmm. So that means you have this star, which is going to be there in like 0.75 seconds or so. I and have to time that with my flash, like you that. have to time that with your flash while Talon's already here. And then he can jump this wall. He can jump this wall. He can jump this yeah. wall. He can jump this wall. Okay, so you only have this amount of space. And if he goes here, he's he's already gone if he goes here. Mm -hmm. Because he can just like hop this wall, then you're done because then he walks there and then you're out. So, it is unlikely that you will kill Talon. And this is just something you have to know that, oh, he's Talon. That sucks. Mm -hmm. Because in the moment, you're not going to be able to think about this as it's paused. You're not going to be able to do all of this. But you can do it all before the game and know, hey, it's Talon. I'm unlikely to catch him. Yeah. Sounds reasonable. Okay, so with that in mind, your target should be here. Sejuani will probably greed for this. Probably. Because there's an Ignite ticking on him and she has double buffs. Whatever. Even if she doesn't greed, you will force her to base because you'll be able to jerk around with her in this area. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this should be your target, but that's not what you do. So, instead you go for the Talon. Talon misplays by making a slight misstep. Okay, at this point, who is your target? Still Sejuani. Sejuani, okay. Yeah. So this should be your only target. So watch her. Okay, you set that up. Yeah. Flash early. I think I flash too late. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you flash early versus flash late, what happens? It happens no matter what. Wait, what? Or well, like it just happens. Like I don't hesitate, and the play happens. Exactly. You will win this fight. Like it is actually impossible for you to lose this fight mm -hmm. if you just flash. Even if you die. Kane will most likely no. yeah. go with you. Sejuani, you have a, a thing coming at her. We don't know her Q mm -hmm. cooldown. It's probably about up. Or rather, we, we could know it, but we actively mm -hmm. chose not to count it. Um, but you flashing late, it's like... Just a top two late, yeah. It's pretty much like you, you have a window of 0.1 seconds or a window of 0.9 seconds. Why would you not take the window of 0.9? Mm -hmm. Because if you're going for the play, you're going for the play. Don't give yourself yeah. less time to react to it, if that makes sense. And don't hesitate. Yeah. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Oh. So, if you had gotten your Q out, we don't know if her cooldown was up, but it was likely that you would have caught her. At this point, yeah. they're both gone. Unless yeah, you have E. Do you have E? Uh, yeah, I do. But okay, so why have you not used it. it already? Because he hit me with the, uh... The oh, with his W, yeah. okay. Yeah, so you look, you see my, yeah. uh, he's on cooldown, so... Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. So, so then you're done. So go back mid. Okay, yeah. cool, you do. You should be pinging your jungler to push his wave. I think I'd do it anyway. Okay. You can't predict Talon will stay, and that's kind of stupid that he does. Because if Kane is there oh. with you, like, yeah. you punish him so hard. But I can't kill him anyway, because I want no mana. Yeah. Okay. So, it is 4.30. It's been, what, five waves? Mm-hmm. 
You have 24 CS. Okay. So you've missed a whole wave already. At least. You do have a slight lead on him. But you have missed a lot of free CS. Yeah. That was preventable. And that's the important thing. Because you can look at this and say, oh, I created a CS advantage. Or you can look at this and say, I created a CS advantage, but not as much as I should have. Yeah. All from level one. Yeah. All from level one. Now, you probably still would have missed some CS, but like, yep. it wouldn't have been as bad. Like, you probably would have had, let's say, 28. Yeah. All right. Which is more gold. Uh -huh. No, I usually buy Dark Seal boots, but in this instance, I bought Dark Seal cloth armor. I think that's fine. I would probably buy boots cloth armor, but Dark Seal is fine I'll, as well. It just depends yeah, on I'll how buy, you want to play it. Yeah, I'll buy Dark Seal for the 25% extra uh, healing because it does mana as well. Yeah. I like it. And that, that just comes down to like how you're going to play the, the, the um, mm -hmm. matchup in the lane. So like that's like difference in item builds. We, we we can disagree forever on it because like oh well yeah let's say i want to roam a little bit more you want to stay mid a little bit more it's fine okay I mean. so what is your plan here uh gank top because i pushed that out i pushed that out talon was got back obviously so he can't really follow up and i have no idea that's warded so okay i was like no we're not so, if we go back to the start of the game, do you remember how I laid out the map? Yeah. Okay. The information that you have right now is that Kane is on the side that he started on. Mm-hmm. Because these camps were just up, this camp. Yeah. That means that this camp was just up. So, it is likely that Sejuani is either here here or here hot map wise she uh, has a chance to be here yep and a pretty high one because she's behind on experience so she wants these krugs so she makes a pathing yep. mistake she should be here because once she clears this then goes here then all this will be up, and then she clears all that efficiently. So this is an inefficient mm -hmm. path by her for farming. But yeah. the point of the matter is, Sejuani could be here. So if you're opting into this 2v2, that's fine. You just need to know that Sejuani could be there, and that Talon could rotate up, and that Kane cannot rotate up. He will Could've rotate down. Yeah. Yes. So it's fine that you're doing this, but you have to remember, Sejuani is top. Or rather, she should be top. Yeah. T uh, right. Kane is bottom, which means that he is not top. And he can't support me. Exactly. If it goes wrong. So, imagine instead of walking this way, you start walking this way. Then I can help Kane. You go with your jungler to... yeah. towards the bottom lane or in the jungle. Mm -hmm. Versus trying to kill the Echo. Who you haven't ganked and now it's already level 5. So he has... Um, extra health really and has a higher chance of surviving yeah and if you're watching the priority Echo has had priority which means this is probably warded and it is mm -hmm. now I'm leaving all this information on for a reason and that's just so that you can see it as it's going but yeah. I would still say this is probably warded if we had this knowledge or not because of the way that I thought about the map you know, mm -hmm. Echo's pushed up all the time. Okay, this is probably warded. That means that there is probably a higher chance, statistically, of going bottom and getting a kill. Yeah. Okay. So you see how I made that decision right there, right? I said, yeah. okay, the jungler is probably here. Not always, but probably here. And this is probably warded because this has been pushed in. And my jungler is bottom side, so it just makes more sense to me to go bottom side. Yeah, okay. So if I follow my jungler, it'll be easier. Yes. Because let's let's say Sejuani's there. Well, you two win if you get on Sejuani before Talon comes. And yeah. if you guys four man bottom, if Sejuani counter ganks and then Talon counter ganks, you guys are gonna win because you have two people there way earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And then so, bot lane will be trumped. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
So all that information I just took and compressed. And these are, again, the decisions you have to make in the game and connect the dots. Because really, you see how once I zoom out the map like this, it's literally just a game of chess. Yeah. Because their queen is here. Their rook is here. The knights are here. So this is their strong side, so why not play to their to your strong side? Or rather, that's a really bad example because this doesn't fit what I was just saying. Yeah. But I didn't think I didn't think that analogy out as I was going. Um, but your queen's here, their queen's there. Yep. Um, if you go one down, then now you have higher priority, and now you have I, I got to think of more chess pieces, more important chess pieces. You have a bishop and a queen there, and whatever. You get the analogy yeah. that I was trying to build, and yeah, that's the important thing. I, I I really had to think that one out more because I really want to build that analogy, but I haven't thought too much about it yet. Okay. Sorry about that. I just cringed on myself a little bit. But anyway. <laughs> oh, let's go back to you. Okay, so if he dies here, he's really bad. And this is an he isolated incident where this should not happen. So you get rewarded for not a bad play, but poor decision making there. Yeah. Because statistically, you see how this way is probably better yeah and now actually wow now you get to look at the the counter effects of what just happened <laughs> sejuani is there talon's there on his way okay so your top side talon can walk bottom sejuani can walk bottom now it's a 4v3 bottom and that's bad so this is fine because your team shouldn't be forcing this fight because you went top but yeah. you know that they're gonna do this or rather, they don't think about your top. So, what can you do? Okay, well, by the time you walk mid, all this farm is going to be dead. Mm -hmm. You can take top turret and force a teleport. Or you can go mid and collect 2 CS. Your call. I personally would probably hit this top turret. Because let's say you get this down to 40%. This is way different than it being 60% from Jace. So this is probably more important than your plus two CS because this is what you're realistically going to get if you go mid. Yeah, which I'll probably do. So we'll see how much you do get. Oh, you, oh no, you base. Right, no, come back. Okay, yeah. so you miss all of this anyway. And the next wave. This is going to bounce out. Okay, so... If you get this, if you come mid for this, this wave does not bounce. This wave is going to bounce because this is a cannon. If this is not yeah. a cannon wave, it won't bounce. Do you know how many turret shots a cannon menu takes? Is, is it seven, I think? Eight. Eight. Oh. Eight in total. It's seven plus last hit. All right. Um, but since you're not lasting it, it's eight. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a long time. Yeah. That means these minions are all walking for that amount of time. Versus being stuck here. Because if that's not a cannon wave, it'll get stuck here. Mm -hmm. Big, big difference now. Because you get punished really hard. So watch the way this minion wave plays out. Because you decided to back and not go mid or push top. Either way. Um, mid, in retrospect, was now the better choice. And I didn't account for the minion wave. So I'm a boosted monkey as well. Okay, but now look at that. You just missed nine minions. Yeah. And That's you're probably going to miss ten. <laughs> yeah, I missed ten. You catch the experience. So you missed nine minions of experience, ten minions of gold. So, what does Talon get? Well, one, two, three, four, five. He gets eleven minions. So he just... You and him together just gave him a differential <laughs> of 2 to 11 minions. You see how big that is? Yeah. Yep. So now he's going to be level 6 and probably slightly higher experience than you do. Or you are. I mean, because you're 6 too. You did catch some experience here, but really not that much. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, can you know that she is here? What do you think? Yes. Yes, I can. How do you know she's there? Because she's just ganked the bot. Okay, yeah. So just keep that in mind. You were playing on the correct side, so I assume you knew. And you already knew this. Yeah. Okay, cool. So just making sure you know. Um, yeah. Because this this is great. If you knew if you knew she was here and you're sitting here, that's perfect. Because um, you can't be ganked there, really. Yeah, I knew she was bot side, so I just stayed that side, really. Cool. I just have your expansion sound playing 24-7. It's really annoying. Yeah, it is annoying. <laughs> okay. Jan's around. This is cool. <laughs> okay, good bait. All right. Could have been played slightly better, but it wasn't bad. You don't get punished for it. Um, everything's cool. Okay. So, right now, are you looking at your are you looking at mid or are you looking at your side lanes? I'm probably looking at the shop. Okay. Um, that's fine too. I, yeah. Oh, I never want to stay. I think I see the minion wave coming in, so I'm just like, mm, I'm gonna die in another wave. Okay, so you could have gotten that a few seconds earlier if you would have watched the minion wave on yeah. the map. Just a small thing. Um, now that you delayed your recall again by walking here, that's a few extra seconds. So you could have been back to lane about five seconds earlier. Yeah. So let's see how that um, plays out. Is my build fine as well with the Seekers? I think it yeah, is. Once, uh, I'll look at that in a second. I just want to see this really quick. Right. Okay. So it, do it doesn't actually punish you at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but that could punish you. That is something that could hurt. Yeah. Okay, so um, if you look at your build, is this fine? Um, well, I've got, a I've got a Seekers against the Talon, and I know I want to get GLP now because I don't really want to rush as on yours. That's my only concern, <laughs> really. So do you need Zonius this game? Uh, I just need it for the protection from Talon, really. Just to Can negate you... the kill pressure. Do you think that negates Talon's kill pressure? Probably not. <laughs> but I feel safer with it. Okay, so feeling safer and being safer are two different things. True. So imagine right now if instead you built GLP, or you started to build GLP and then... Wait... Okay, and then turn this onto into Ninjatabi. That will be better than getting the Seekers. So, this reduces the... Um, it reduces Echo's E damage by 10%. Did you know that? Yeah, I know it's an auto attack, so... Okay. Um... So that reduces his damage, and that's a large chunk of his damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that reduces Talon's damage, all of his damage, because he's all physical. That reduces and Draven's Draven. damage, and it reduces Sona power cord. So, so I should be a Ninja Tabi. So you see how Ninja Tabi are pretty much giga broken in this game, because you just effectively yes. get so much extra health. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now imagine that your build is like, let's say, Tabi... GLP, Rylai's, Leandri's, um, Void, and then Rabadons probably, right? Oh, situational Rabadons, yeah. Okay, look how much health you have. Health, health, health. C coupled with this armor, the only person you're weak to is echo really mm -hmm. because like sona is not going to burst you through all that health sejuani is definitely not going to burst you through all that health and it's echo top so he's probably not going to build the standard full ap echo he'll probably nope. build at least he one went, tank item you went something stupid but you know so 
that's why this build is probably better than getting a Zonia's. Mm -hmm. Because what do you... Okay, so what do you sacrifice for Zonia's? I sacrifice the Rylas, pretty much. Okay. That's unfortunate, because Talon gets super kited by it. Sejuani gets super kited by it. Echo gets super kited by it. Because they're all short range or melee. Yeah. So you see how that is probably better. Yeah. Okay, so this is the type of stuff you should be doing in game. Like, sorry, the, um, like while mm -hmm. you're basing or like in the pregame. Yep. Plan your build. Because once the game starts, I know, let's say, if I'm going to get, for like the most part, Lost Chapter into guys, into Morellos, or if I'm going to get Morellos before, or if I'm going to get Aludins, or how about a Banshee's Veil? Mm -hmm. I know all this kind of stuff, like, going in. Granted, the game, yeah. the state of the game might change. I might get really fed or something like that, so it changed my build slightly, but I know the general path. You should definitely know your general path. Um, yeah, I do know my general path, but it's just that sometimes I fit in a Zonia's just for excess. Oh, as you said. So Zonia's is, like, actually one of the worst AP items in the game. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Okay, because statistically, it's really bad. It just doesn't give you the amount of stats you would want for an item that cost. Mm -hmm. So that's why you try to avoid it whenever possible. And you usually... Okay, what are you doing here? So, thingy, uh, they pinged me to say that that's warded. Okay. So I'm just sitting here waiting to get the all clear to go in. And so I can E over the uh, wall and they might not see me. Judging you of that, what... Where Kane is, isn't wanted. Okay. So, I'm going to tell you why this is the wrong thing to do and you shouldn't listen to them. Mm -hmm. You going bottom is fine. Your jungle is going bottom. This is great. Yeah. We know it's warded there. Okay. Once Kane gets here, you should be ready to go in. Because look at what Draven does. I didn't even look at the overall, like, at this to know this. Mm -hmm. All I was doing is looking at the mini map. Okay, so you can't see the minimap, yep. but no, look, Kane shows outside of that wall, and they basically immediately back up. Yeah, that's so a clear indicator running. that it's warded. So you can actually go that. when Kane is about here. Yeah, and that's how you force that play. You go back mid, and I see that I'm looking in the corner. This is fine too. Man. Looks like you missed play a little Man. bit. Yeah, I do have a preemptive ult. Just in case he goes back on me. Yeah, that's fine. The all was fine. Oh, what just happened? So, cool. Good Q. You clipped him. Okay, good movement. Talon throws here, so you just keep walking up. That's great. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, is you would ideally walk down. Mm -hmm. uh, because we know Kane's over here. But that's not the worst thing either. I know it's hard to do in the moment. But now you see how if you would have walked down, you would have been here, and Talon would have jumped here, yeah. and Kane would have been here. So that's Much how closer. that small movement could make a big difference. Mm -hmm. At this point, why don't you ult? Because he has ult still. Yeah, you just need to stall enough time for mm -hmm. um, for Kane though. So if, like if I go back, let me show you. Like I think you play a little bit too defensively and not offensively. So. Yeah. I'll pause it again. I use my ult. I do use my ult way more defensively than offensively. Okay, so right here. Talon ults on you. Oh, he just ult me. He doesn't use here, ult. He doesn't ult on you. He, he cues yeah. you. What if you ult now like that? What the? That goes under Talon. That puts if him you... straight under Talon, yeah. If you build like this, he will maybe not take a turret shot, but he's near this. Mm-hmm. And even if you die here, Talon will die. Which means okay. more net gold for your team. Yep. Okay, so... That's just... This is like an, an offensive move, right? Because mm -hmm. it's just looking more proactively instead of saying, oh, he still has alt, I can alt. Because look, mm -hmm. see... He just runs away once Kane's there because he knows he's going to immediately die. Yeah. So if you alt him towards Kane, he can't jump on you. And you see, this alt doesn't do anything. It does, yeah. 
it does like wait don't get me wrong yeah. it does do something it zones him from going into for a kill but mm -hmm. he was already running away so he was here when he uses alt you start walking this way he starts walking this way and then you alt here so you don't know where he is in there no nope, and you doing this defensive alt is fine but imagine if you would have alted c aggressively and pushed him towards kane Instead of saying, shoot, I have to push him away from me. Mm -hmm. Big difference. Yeah. You might die, you might not die, but you'll most likely have that kill. Oh, does he just die now? Yep, he just, oh. He should die anyway. That's unlucky. No, no, it's fine. That is fine. <laughs> That's unlucky for both teams. Yep. Okay, I need to unplug my mouse really quick, because... Uh... It's doing exactly that. Okay. Alright. Okay, so this stems from you not doing that mid, actually. <laughs> yeah so that's good that's very good on Talon to recognize that they can do something as four you see how he goes bottom with his jungler yeah just like you tried to do okay so that's the type of stuff you should do now here you don't kill him and they go down and kill your bottom that's a big impact that stems from your play because you were thinking too defensively mm -hmm. whereas if you kill him that doesn't happen so it's kind of unfortunate, right? Now, yeah. you have two options. You can either push mid or you can go top. You know that one, right? Yep. Okay. If For the chat, the reason is, if they make a play bottom, this is their strong side. They have four people here. That means there can be yep. nobody else top, which means you should go there. You can also push mid, but like, you're not going to get this turret. And if you take this turret, Talon just free roams anyway. Yep. So it's not the worst thing to not take this turret. Ideally, you want this turret, but if you can make a play top, that is a lot better. Because then Jace gets this turret, and then Jace can do some free stuff mm -hmm. or whatever. Okay, so once you see Echo backing up, or like Jace here, you should back up. Don't waste your ward here, it doesn't do anything. You know they're all bottom lane. Yeah. So see, imagine if... You're here, you see Jace under turret, so Jace's turret, Echo's basing, you can't get to him, so you drop a ward here, and then you get a uh, pink ward there. Or, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, um, your regular yeah. ward here. Yeah. See how that's, that's better than getting this, and then just walking mid? Yeah, I think I did it twice, that one up there. Cool. So small things. Like, these are just really small yeah. things. But they add up and have significant impact. Because, yeah. right now... Sejuani is probably clearing her blue and bottom side because she was just bottom so she's probably going to go back either after recalling or just clearing and then mm -hmm. base or go top side and do something you'll know for a fact where she is after that and that piece of jungle information is really valuable okay so it's 11 minutes you have 73 cs and talon has 70 a lot of that stems from level one not well yep. not as much as you would think but yeah. a pretty significant chunk of that stems from level one because of the way that the wave was that's important to know um yeah you should definitely have higher cs you should have like 90 realistically by now um mm -hmm. so just keep that in mind because you are missing some free cs and i know it really is a little bit harder to cs on but like once you know how to CS on him, like, perfectly, it's, like, actually insane. Okay, so you're giving him way priority right now. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, because he can still all in me. Okay. So this is good? This is why I hate this champion? <laughs> no, you did good. Once he used his cooldowns, you jumped on him. So good job. Yep. We'll see if those few micro steps matter. Here I had flash, 
And he complained at me for not flashing in front of that queue. Or whatever it is from Sedge Warner. No. Okay. So, I'm not going to flame you for that. I'm going to flame you for what you did before that. Okay. So, Kane is topside. Yep. Where did I say their jungler would be? Bot side before, but now they're returning topside. Okay. Do you know, would you know that Sejuani is topside in this game? Nope. Okay, but I would, so, if I put that ward over there. So, if you put that ward over here, one, you would know. Mm. Two, if you were tracking the jungler, you would know. So, again, you know why, right? Because... Yeah. She, she was just bottom, so she's going to clear this. Yeah. And then either base or go here. Or uh -huh. base, go here, and then go here. Either way, the oh, general yeah. path is she's going to be here, and she's going to go here. And you just time that. So, if you know that she's there, why do you start walking here? Because I just want to get out of vision. Just, uh, you know, give a roam sense, basically, like roam pressure, basically. Can you, know, you get out of vision right. here? Yes. Which is by your jungler. Mm -hmm. I should be running towards my jungler in case he gets caught. Yeah. You should be supporting him because if you 2v2 this, you win every single time. Yeah. You will win this every single time. And Jace has an equal priority to Echo. If you look on the map. Well, well he's, got, he's running 2k now, I guess. Well, he, he's just, like, in between the two, right? So, he like, he'll get to both. Yeah, yeah. So, this is why being with Kane is better. You should, Okay, so literally as a jungler, mid and jungle is 2v2. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. it is actually a 2v2 lane. So, you should play it like a 2v2 lane. You should literally just be mirroring your jungle pretty much the entire game. Because that's how you get significantly stronger. Because now you're roaming as two instead of one. <laughs> yeah. And you know if you fight 2v2, you will win. Because, because Talon's low. So I know this bottom lane looks juicy. I know you're trying to play Aurelian Soul who's roaming. But this is why champions like Aurelian Soul aren't just push and roam. But a lot of yeah. people do play them like push and roam champions. So your mentality is probably, okay, I pushed, better roam bottom because they're fighting. Yep, that's literally it. Okay, well, instead, you should look at it. Hey, I pushed, why not help my jungler? Because look, you sh you should know for a fact that all this is up by jungle yeah. tracking that I explained earlier. So that's not like some mystical voodoo that I'm looking using the spectator client. You know that his top jungle is up. Yeah. So if you take this camp, this camp, that hurts Sejuani a lot. And that gets your hyper farming jungler ahead. Which means you have a higher chance of winning this game. Whereas if you go bottom, it's going to take you 12 seconds to get bottom. In 12 seconds, they can just walk away. Right? Because your your bottom lane doesn't have any yeah. lockdown, right? Like, <laughs> No. Now, now it would be different if this is like Leona, or this is Thresh, yeah. and then this is like Varus or some crap. You know, like, that's different. That's when bottom lane yeah. is like, oh, this is so free all game. Yeah, but pretty much. You it's look not. at all this opportunity that you have here that you didn't look at. I guarantee you didn't look at it because you were walking here. Nope. Because if yeah. you look at this, you see this is the most free thing in the world. Okay, so you walk bottom. We'll see how long it takes you. 28. You walk bottom for five seconds. So you were here. Imagine if you walk five seconds this way. Here. I'll be nearer to much nearer. You see how this is auto win? Yeah. Okay, so now we, we even have to add an extra second. Because look. Or not an extra second, but an extra few pixels. Because you walk here, then here. <laughs> Why? You are stronger than this guy. Look at it. He's sitting at 40% health. Why are you... Like, hello? Like... If he, if he cues you, you ult him. Like... Yeah. You win this. You have exhaust. You just win. So this micro step, look, it's not much, but instead of being here, you'd be here. Big difference. Only a few pixels, big difference. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. I'm still a little inaccurate with my tablet. Okay. So you'd be a few pixels closer. Yep. You would be, say, here, maybe. And now he's zoned because your star is here. 
see how, again, even if we discount these five seconds, this little micro step from there to there makes a world of a difference because your star is only here instead of being here. Yeah. Big, 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 big difference. So these micro things are things you can work on as well. Um, you flashing in front of him? No. Like, whatever. But the mistake you make before that? Yeah, that's pretty yeah. big. Okay. And when when a teammate says, okay, what are you doing? Inting. Okay, so now you're inting. So now you wasted your flash. I wasted flash for another reason. Yeah, you have like 10% mana, so you can't do that anymore. Yeah. So make the intelligent play there instead of the like, yeah. oh, I need to make something happen after the fact play. Uh, and now so, I lose the whole wave. So now you lose the whole wave, Talon got a whole wave, and you're actually down in CS, even though you've been ahead. Mm -hmm. So most of this has been decision making and has been micro play. So far, do you feel like you have a better sense of micro and macro? Yes. I okay, do. cool. So Talon stayed. You should be running at him. Because you still have alt. Like, he's staying with 40% health. Why are you backing up? What are you doing? Unlevel. Oh, you don't. Oh, no, my bad. Okay. Did you look top before you go top? Yes, I was looking because okay. I wouldn't go with the other ones. And so, I went there again. We know Jace is pushing. This ward sucks again for that yep. same reason I described earlier. Or, sorry, sorry. Jace is pushed in, not pushing. Mm. So it's unlikely you'll be able to do anything there. Okay. So, just for people watching, it's uh, 13 minutes in game. This VOD review is going for an hour and a half. There's a lot to improve on in a short amount of time. For all games, not just this game. Okay, so you're giving him pressure, which is fine. Yeah. He has his dust plate now as well. What's not fine is you just ate 60% of your health for no reason. So. Yeah. <sighs> um, right here. You let him jump on you, and then you expand. Mm -hmm. From that point, you just, like, lose. To be completely honest, you might want to ult him early. Because... Him from chunking me. Yes. Because if you guys trade health, you don't go down to 40%, and he's down at, like... Like, you, you would be right there. You'd be 70%. And then he yeah. would be 70%. Granted, you don't have ult. He has ult. But you're in kill pressure now. Like, he can just dive you. Your ult now, it's like you don't really have a good time to use it, per se. Mm -hmm. That was smart to dodge and back up, by the way. Um, a lot of people wouldn't. I think they did such a good job on Kane la Kane's laugh. <laughs> yeah. Like, when he ults. I think that laugh is so fitting. Okay, so... Stuff happened bottom, you push mid, cool. That's great. You guys should look top or rift. Um, or just be careful of dragon or push mid or base. You have so many options right now, you just choose which one you want to do. Mm -hmm. You need to defend him a little bit. He's being kind of greedy. So Absolutely. there's action top. Yeah. This is fine for you to do this. Um, if we go back though, after this play, right now reassess your win condition. What is your win condition? Team a five v five, one three one, or four one. Which one is it now? Uh, right now it's uh. 5v5. Considering okay, you are right. Do you know why? 
because they're all top lane except for Echo. But you know, I didn't know Echo was up, was look walking bottom anyway. Okay, so the reason is Jace is losing in priority to Echo somehow. Mm -hmm. You lose in priority to Talon, which means their one three one is significantly stronger than your one three one or your four one. Yeah. Because and we would just lose side yeah, lanes. Exactly. So these two are your options. So therefore you five v five. So therefore in chat you say group five v five fight we're stronger. Okay, that's exact. Like literally you just say that. Yep. And group and just go somewhere with your team. It can be here, like just like siege mid. This mm -hmm. is a great way to just force a five v five because you will. Yeah. Otherwise, you just dive them as they try to one through one because that's what you do. And then you take mid in him because their split pushers are trying to take tier one and tier two. I would trade my tier one top and tier two bottom for mid in him any day. Yep. I think I would too. <laughs> okay, so that's what you should be saying in game. I know it's only 15 minutes. Yeah. I know that's not team fight time for a lot of games. But your win condition right now is to 5v5. So you being able to recognize stuff like that in future games, you should be actively calling and shot calling and making plays to 5v5. Hmm. So like this, you going top, that's good. That is forcing a team fight. That's all you want to do for the next five minutes or so is force team fights. If this game goes late, you guys will lose the game. Echo cleans up this one, I think. Mm-hmm. Do you know why you guys will lose this in late game? Because they outscale us. Uh, their their threats can kill your threats because you don't really have a tank. Yeah. Like Kane is like a pseudo tank, right? But he's not like. He's not full tank. Yeah. Okay, so you're making a plant echo. Well, I did that just try and get as many minions as I can. Okay. I will speed through most of it now mm -hmm. um, and talk more about macro play because most of the micro and decision making is usually in the mid game um, because that's how you create advantages, right? Because if you play yeah. this right until now, the game's over. Most games, yeah. sh you should be able to actively have decided a winner by 17 minutes. All right. Because Special, yeah. awesome. you're a roaming champion. So imagine if you're here instead of over here in that play. Okay, so now just, yeah. you have more kills. Okay, imagine that you don't go top. Instead, you go bottom with your jungler. Okay, now you have more kills. And you have dragon because of snowball effect. And then you have this turret because of snowball effect. And then because you have this turret, this turret goes down easier. So then you actually get this turret once you make that play mid. Mm -hmm. So imagine now the gold lead would be like, let's say 34k to 30. See how much more favored you guys are? Yep. And that's how you actively win a game. By you not making those intelligent, thought-out, active plays, you kind of just leave this game up to chance. Like a coin flip? Yeah, exactly. It's literally a coin flip at this point. And that's not the type of game you want to play. Like, you're making your life harder by not actively thinking about those plays. Because, like I just said and explained, like if you did those active plays, the game's actually over by this point. You would just be able to win. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between a um a lower elo player or like a d5 player or a d3 player and then the the better be, like the super high tier players is they yeah. don't leave games up to coin flip to generally depend on macro they actively take the game in their hands and then say if i didn't take it in my hands if i didn't grab the game by the balls why is it not over mm -hmm. yeah i understand that because unless you're in like, like Masters, Diamond or Challenger, like, and it's a really high quality game, most games should be able to be decided in a very short amount of time. Yeah. I mean, I just hint this drive in here. Yeah, you hint a little bit. It's fine. I think. Okay, so I think you get kind of lucky. Um. Okay, so. Is it incredible? Yeah, you should be here. It's not the worst thing that you're here. So if you die, like you you essentially trade one for one mm -hmm. on Echo, but you don't need to die is the point. 
Yeah. And you zoning Draven, that's great, but you can zone him like by standing here. Yeah. Not here. Because your expansion Three. will be here. And then he can't really walk into that because you threaten a Q and then an R. Yeah. <laughs> no thanks, Dad. What? No thank you. <laughs> um so you, you you don't you don't need to be there basically. And then like because yeah. if you get crit you die. Yeah, and so. but luckily I didn't, but still yeah. even there, I'm on that much HP now. So, so just a back. Oh. just a small um thing yeah. there. Because like even if you die, right, like it's a one for one. Mm-hmm. Come on, guys. I don't eat pizza. Okay, your build. You start going GLP. Cool. That Zonia's is triggering me and Merc Treads. Yep. Why do you have Merc Treads? I have no idea why I have Merc Treads. Probably because uh, so Echo, Sona, and Sejuani CC. That's what's in my head right now. Like, I was thinking, hmm. All right, so you ready for this? So, How do you get hit by Echo CC? By being retarded. How do you get hit by Sona CC? By being retarded. There you go. The only one you should ever get hit by is maybe Sejuani, and that's if you don't have flash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Merc Treads are just like, oh, I'm bad. <laughs> right? Like, Pretty, like yeah. th that's that's how you should look at the Merc Treads. Like, oh, I'm buying these because, oh, I'm bad. Yeah. So instead of, like, relying on items to, like, make up for, like, oh, I'm bad, get unbad. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and I know, I know I'm, like, jesting with this one a little bit, but, like, um, how, like, really, if you know where Echo is, you can't get hit by a stun. If you have Flash, you can't get hit by a stun. Same thing for Sona. If you know where Sona is, and you know she has Flash Alt, and you know she's looking to engage, don't be in Flash Alt range, or be on the very mm -hmm. cusp. That type yeah. of stuff, you know, like, just play towards your win condition, and then look more optimally. So, when people are, like, playing against Zed, right? And they're like, oh, I'm against Zed, I need to get first item Zonia's. I'm like, Mm, I don't do that. Mm, do you really need to get first item Zonia's? What if instead you denied him 20 CS in lane and you harassed him out? Well, then he can't kill you because you're a whole kill up on him. And if yep. you freeze the wave and slow push, he still can't kill you. So do you really need that Zonia's first item? Probably not. Yeah. And th that's just like... That. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I I'm not saying you did do the Zed one, but yeah, like no. these Merc Treads, it's like literally the same exact thing. Like, yeah, I know. Okay, cool. Okay. So, at this point, you guys have two options. Do you know what they are? Push mid or go back. Okay. You can be boosted and you can go base, or you can be a yeah. good player, go mid, take this turret, go rift tail, take this turret, and base. Do you do that? No. Do you tell your team to do that? Nope. Okay, why not? Because I'm not sure what to do. Okay, so... Okay. Um, the way I just figured out what to do is I looked at pressure on the map and the timers. So, Sejuani is dead for 30 seconds. Talon is dead for 30 seconds. Sona is dead for 15 seconds. When Sona's here... That doesn't matter. Sona and Draven cannot defend against U4. Okay, so it's going to take at least 30 seconds for them to be able to defend. Mm -hmm. Echo is still here. If Echo rotates, that's fine. But if you walk here and drop a ward here, how do you how do you die? Yeah. You don't. If Echo walks here and there's a ward here, Jace gets top turret. Okay, cool. You have a mini wave. Draven cannot clear this mini wave. He, he literally cannot clear it. So you guys have enough time to take this off this one mini wave and then rotate here. Or if time's getting really crunched for some reason, like Echo rotates and then messes with you guys a little bit, then you don't take this. But you should still be able to get this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my train of thought behind what why I just said that decision. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay, so that is all literally just thinking about the game, how much damage yeah. stuff does. You know, it's 20 minutes. Turrets fall yeah. pretty quickly to four champions at 20 minutes. And you have the mini wave. And he can't clear. Now, if this is Victor, can you go mid? No, you should go here instead. Because Rift Herald guarantees this turret. Yeah. But you guys back up. You guys don't get any damage on this turret. Draven just soaks the wave for free. You don't get Rift Herald or Baron. Okay, so Rift Herald wasn't up. My bad. Um, mm -hmm. But you guys don't get anything. So my bad on the Rift Herald. You guys, you guys could not do Baron. That is my mistake. Yep. 
I mean, I looked to go top, but Jace was like two mana, so he just pinged that. Mm -hmm. Wait, you guys just won, I... and you just lost mid turret. I think I saved it, but... Well, you you lost it. That's literally three yeah. health. The next mini wave, yeah. you lose that. That's disgusting, right? That That is the type uh -huh. of play that you cannot have. So let's say your team bases, right? You should either base and recall straight mid, or you should just defend this turret. Because this turret... God, oh my god. I'm not going to go through this entire discussion about this turret, because I've done it like 100 times. But this turret is so <laughs> important. If you have this turret, yeah. they can't go like this. They cannot go like this. So that means that they have to go like this or like this. And then you guys can safely stand here, which means that you guys can c collapse like this because you have a viable situation to yeah, be able to stand there. More options. Yeah. yeah. So this turret falling means they get access to all of this and all of this. That is actually what this turret means. That's why yeah. every time you take Rift Herald, you should literally just rift this turret right here. Forgot. Even if it's like 40% health, you still just rift this turret. Unless you're in a team, in which case your group is five, and then just power it down. But like in solo queue, you just rift this turret because then you just get everything. Like, first mid turret is so broken, it's actually insane. That's why champions like Victor and Ziggs are like... In team play, they're so annoying to play against. Well, Ziggs less so because he's very punishable, but like... Victor, Orianna, who can ult the wave every single wave, like... What do you do again? How do you take mid turret? You don't. It's disgusting. I hate those champions. <laughs> you hate your own lane. Yeah. Okay, so you're creating pick on Draven. It's cool. Uh, you should probably alt him. This is again being aggressive uh, because yeah. he is stuck here. Okay, at that point, you're here. How does he dodge this ult? He doesn't. <laughs> he the only possible way for him to dodge this ult is to flash. If you trade your R for his flash, you win. Yeah. Okay? If he doesn't flash, he's here slowed by like 80%. Or like That's what, 60%? It's 80%. Okay, 80%. That means Janna gets a free knockup. That means Jace gets a few free shots. That means Kane gets an ability. That means you get two stars. That means Misfortune gets an E. That means yes. he dies. He dies, yeah. But instead, you're like, you're playing afraid because you're afraid of Talon. Well, guess what? Yeah, if you kill much. Draven, how do you guys lose? We don't. You really can't lose. Unless you guys blow, like, everything. Like, Kane alts, and Misfortune alts, and Aurelian Soul alts, and Janna alts for some reason. That's the only yeah. time you guys would lose. So it's like, be proactive. If you see a play, like, like okay, so for reference, right? If I'm Orianna and Draven's here, I'm literally alting his ass. Every single yeah. time. Because guess what? I Q, W, auto, R, E him. Or something around like this. And then he's yeah. down to 20%, even if I don't kill him. And somebody will finish him off. And if nobody finishes him off, that means we have pressure on the map. You don't have to get a kill to be successful. For for a very clear point, let's say they have Lee Sin jungle. And you burst Lee Sin down to 10%. If you guys just run to Baron, yeah. Lee Sin is effectively dead. He's yeah. not dead, but he's effectively dead. Which is the important part, because you can have 10% health, but you're not going to do anything. You can't do anything. So therefore, in terms of overall map presence, you're dead. You're not alive. You're off the map. Yeah. So then you can force something. So if you guys kill Draven, you guys can just force this turret and then take this turret. And all of that comes from you not pulling the trigger. Mm -hmm. And so we'll see what happens here. I imagine like Sejuani ults you guys or something. And then you get flanked like this and then Draven runs at you and then you guys die because you guys are all clumped and you didn't take advantage while you could. I'd imagine that's what happens. No? Okay. That's why I paused it right at that time, because yeah. I was like, you guys are definitely going to get engaged on. Okay, so you're really, and you can do that kind of stuff. You can stand forward. Yeah. Um, you can't stand too far forward, but once Echo drops his stun like from here, you need to be careful, because you don't know when... Where he dropped it? Did he drop it here? 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 Where did he drop it? Yeah, I just need you to be more careful. You do not want to be anywhere in these areas. Mm -hmm. You want to be, like, here. Because I know this fits my drawing perfectly. But if you're here, if he goes over here, you walk like this. If he goes over here, yeah. you walk like this. If he goes over here, you dodged. If you're over here, you dodged. 
Diet coaching? Come on. You got lucky that... Um, that he's pretty bad at his W's and that Janna got a good Q. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you know the talent behind you? Yes. Okay. Just making sure because which your is, decision is fine. Yeah. You just need to understand it. Yeah, which is why we were, we like... I was just scared of talent on this fight because he might kill the battle line because Janna hasn't hasn't got up now. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have not used your exhaust very often in this game. Nope. Um, exhaust is one of the lowest cooldown summoners. If you take exhaust and don't... Okay, it's like picking Blitzcrank and never hooking. Yeah, okay. I mean, you know, I, I sometimes should, should try and... you don't want to hook as Blitzcrank, right? Like, you, you want that yeah. hook up because it's pressure to have it. But mm -hmm. if you literally never use your hook... Then what's the point? Why would you pick Blitzcrank, right? Same yeah. thing. If you're literally never going to use your exhaust because, oh, this might happen in the future... Why take exhaust? Exhaust cooldown? Look at it. Do you know exhaust cooldown? It is 200 seconds. Well, 210. But it's 200 seconds. That's three minutes. For reference, if you base and go back to mid, that's 30 seconds. Or rather, sorry, 40 seconds. Because of the base time and then the travel time back yeah. here. 40 seconds out of 210 seconds. Well, guess what? That's like 20% of the cooldown. Uh-huh. And then you clear another wave. That's another 30 seconds. Okay, so now that's 70 out of 210. I'll Guess what? It, so. Look at that. It's already a third up. And then you roam next wave. Okay, well now it's yeah. like 60% up because you just roamed forever. So it's like, just use it. Like, don't be afraid. Like, I'll just... Don't use it aggressively, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's, that's a pretty big mistake, right? Because, like, mm -hmm. it's one of your tools that you have don't consider it aggressively versus defensively consider it as using it okay because ultimately it's not the reason why you use it it's that you use it okay because it, it has a slow right it has yeah, damage reduction no it does it does it slow damage reduction it has damage reduction yeah yeah I'm sorry, I was thinking about magic resistant armor reduction. So it has damage reduction and a slow. So that's what you need to look at exhaust as. You don't look at it as, oh, it's my defensive summoner. You know, you don't look at flash as your defensive summoner, do you? No. Exactly. I mean, like, see, like, right here, you ulted. Or, sorry, you flashed forward. Why not exhaust forward? You know, like... Yeah. Okay. What I mean, the... that's the fat fate. That's the fat oh, okay. <laughs> you looked pretty funny there. Okay, so that's that's unlucky. You make a pretty good play here, so it's not that bad. Um, okay, cool. So what can they do on the map right now? Look at the map. What do you have? Uh, just mid tier, mid tier one standing up. Top, top and bottom both got pressure. They've both got life pressure. So. Okay, so you have this pushing. You have this pushing. You guys can defend this turret. Mhm. Mm you need to get here as soon as possible. You should E here if you have E. Yeah, I do. Okay, so you should be Eing there. Um, but otherwise, look, if they don't... Oh, um, I just... Start at Spotify. If you E this and save this turret, you're a legend. Because they miss this, they miss this. And they're wasting their time. And they don't get anything mid. You guys actually won the fight. Like, see? Mm -hmm. Two, three. You guys should have map pressure. Because you guys have wave pressure, wave pressure, and people mid. So, you won't be able to take a turret, but you'll be able to get damage on the top and bottom turret. Okay, so you do E there. Cool. I hope you defend this and don't greed for them. Well, I'm more interested. But... George, this is this is close. This is too close for comfort. Yeah, that turret is worth way more than the chance of that kill because this guy's just bad. You should not kill him. Yep. And again, see, like you don't get punished there for that, right? But mm -hmm. imagine the case where you do get punished for that. That sucks. Yeah, and we lose that tower. That you lose that turret for nothing. So fun. Yeah. Okay. Here I die. I think. 
So I'm going to give you a little bit of math really quick. Um, because math is really important in League. Yeah. So, right now, we know Draven is here. We have this word, and he was just clearing a minion, so we know he's here. Mm -hmm. We know Sejuani's here. We know Jace is up. Ideally, you guys kite this way. Can you kite this way with their position? No. No. Okay, so that means you have to kite this way. And Janna should recognize this as well and walk this way. Um, but she doesn't. So anyway, we're, we're only going to talk about you. So, you expand here. If you Q here versus Q here versus Q here, what is the most optimal Q? At driving. Yeah, it's this one. Because this is the only area that he can get to you. Mm -hmm. And I'll just lock him off. Yeah, so, like, he can flash, right? But, like, at that point, he flashed on you. So it's like... It sucks, yeah. but it's not the worst thing. It's making mm -hmm. a kind of good out of bad situation. Okay, but you Q in the wrong area. See, you Q here. Oh, I, I Q too late, rather. As well. No, 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 no. Even, okay, oh. so at this point, we reassess it, right? What is the uh, best Q now? There, or the middle one. The middle one, still. Yeah. Because if you Q here, well, guess what? He literally just walks this way. Pretty, okay, so if I, if I draw these triangles... If you draw on the top angle, he walks towards the bottom angle. If you draw on the bottom angle, he walks to the top angle. Actually, walking to the top angle is better for you than him walking to the bottom angle because you need to kite this way. So, your your options, the three options, this one is the best, this one is the second best, this one is the third best. You chose the worst option. This is decision making. Micro yeah. decision making because again, if you queue here, he has to walk around this. Whereas if you queue here, he just walks towards you. So you probably don't have to flash here unless he flashes on you. Um, so you should also probably flash to stand aside instead of flashing after because if he stand aside crits you, you die because static shiv or something. Yeah. Okay, you need to avoid stab soon. Instead, I up for Leandri's. Imagine if you didn't get Zonia's. You could have Leandri's and Void's death. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm concerned about, anyway. Here, we okay. just start losing fights, I think, as well. So you guys are up in gold. You guys don't know this. You guys probably think you're about even. I would yeah. think you guys are about even. Like, if I'm in this game actively, I'd say, okay, we're about even. Mm -hmm. So you guys shouldn't lose fights. So it has to come down to some micro or macro play um i don't care if it's your teammates i only care if it's yours so you're sitting here in mid it's 25 minutes your farm is 160 you have missed over 120 farm that you could have gotten yeah pretty abysmal so if you had 120 more farm you would already have leandre's torment yep big item difference And then you would just win fights because you would have your team would be 50k gold. You guys would have a 5k gold lead. Okay. Oh, I forgot it doesn't slow it down. Shit. I don't know why that happened. Okay. So. You're in a good spot. Uh, or rather, this is a good spot for your team to fight. It's fine. You are not in a good spot. <laughs> no. Because. It's three of you here against Echo now. And that's not the worst thing. But it's against Echo Sejuani. You guys get Ard here, you lose the game. Because then they go to Baron. Yeah. Were you thinking about this in the game? Well, I was like thinking, hmm, if we get collapsed on in a corridor, we've pretty much lost the game because of Sejuani. Okay. The reason this is a really bad spot for you is because... Kane is over here basing. He's back. Yeah. So he has to go like this, like this, like this, or like this to get to you guys. If these two land a combo here, or if Sejuani just R's you, you guys lose Baron. Yeah. End of the game. You guys being in this corridor like this is not inherently bad. In fact, I think it's rather good. Um, or rather... 
it's not good, it's not bad. I, I should have clarified earlier. Um, because you're really in, you have a good AoE presence here. Jace, mm-hmm. good AoE presence. Kane, good AoE presence, but Kane's not there. Yeah. Jenna, really great zoning in this area. Misfortune, really great AoE presence. So you guys fighting here isn't bad. But Kane not being here means you guys cannot be here. So we'll see how this plays out, but I imagine this is where things start to go bad. So he, they, she yeah. only stunned you. Okay. Or sorry, she only stunned Misfortune. Misfortune did not get to use her AoE presence. So now you guys auto lose this. Yep. Because imagine if Misfortune was here getting this all. You guys literally just auto win this. But you guys auto lose it because you guys were grouped up. When Kane was not there. So this is when Kane is like, GG, team extended, right? That's probably what he said, yep. something like that. Okay, well, guess yep. what? He's right. That's not to say that Kane should have backed at a better time, but in solo queue, you cannot rely on your teammate to make the right macro play. Even if, like, so if, okay, let me let me rephrase that. If you guys staying there, it's objectively the best call, but Kane wants to base. And Kane is actually showing that he's basing. It is no we longer should. the objectively yeah. right play for you guys to be here. Because now you have and to reassess should. yourself. Yeah. It's four and one. And Kane is basing. And it's we the, need to five v five. Yeah. It's the classic scenario of of this that I love to talk about. So it's like thirty minutes. You guys are pushing top. There's four people top. There is a Trindamy here. Okay. Obviously, he's here, so he does not have pressure on this. He does not have yeah. pressure on this. He's all the way back there. Okay. Yep. He wants to split push. You guys want to force a fight for this inhib. Okay. If you guys are around here, and then let's say somebody gets caught, you guys cannot flame Trindamir. Even if you guys are objectively stronger in the 5v5, you get like you guys will just win. Like mm-hmm. I'm saying for a fact, you guys will win this 5v5. Like 100 percent If you guys do not back up and respect the fact that Trindamir is over here, you guys deserve to lose that fight. Because the enemy is of course just gonna engage the 5v4. And then you guys yeah, don't will. win. Yeah. So you guys do not win a 4v5. You guys do win a 5v5. But he does yeah. not want to play it like that. And he that's wants not to do saying what he wants to do. Yeah. That's not saying that you have to cater to what he's doing, but you do. So it's not like you guys have to say, oh GG, Trin won't ever group, and then make an objectively bad play of sending a four versus five. Instead yeah. you say, Oh, Trinamir won't group. Maybe we don't fight here. Instead we rotate here and get some damage here. It's not ideal. It's not the best play, but when you take into account what your team has on the map, effectively you only have four people here. So play like it. Yeah. And that's decision making. And this this is again a really big thing here. Because mm-hmm. what you being here is fine. If Kane is around here, it's fine. You guys can't be grouped as like literally three on top of each other. But you guys being there isn't bad. But once you guys recognize that Kane is basing and he's not staying now it's very bad to be here. It is literally that exact same Trindamir situation that I just drew out. Like, God, my phone just went off, and I checked it on accident. Like, I like looked over, thought I saw a Game of Thrones spoiler. <laughs> that would have been unlucky. I just got a spook. Okay. So they get caught. And that's kind of unfortunate. We'll see if you can make it. No. Okay. Right now, what are you thinking? I literally typed in chat. We're throwing. Okay. So, what can they do right now? They can get Baron. They They can. They can. Kane is dead and Misfortune's dead. So, they can. your goal... Is to try to neutralize them from getting barren. Yep. We'll see if they choose to. They probably don't.
But at that point, I just said, she's dead. I can't do anything yeah, about that. Yeah, you can't help her anymore. Okay, so but does nah. you going top stop them from getting Baron? Nope. No. So I know it sucks that you would have to miss that farm, but if they get Baron, does that farm really matter? No. No. Not at all. So you should be trying to protect Baron instead of trying to protect this turret. Yeah. I even got back because I'm like, I can't stop that now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So now it sucks because now you can't really do anything. You guys looks like you guys will kill Echo, but like. No, I don't think we do. Oh, that's unfortunate. He has a really tanky build, so yeah, it's kind of sucky. Literally at this point as well, they're just running down mid and win now. It's kind of sucks. Well, yeah, so you guys were up 5k gold, or 4k gold. Now you guys are down for 5k gold. Yeah. So this swing right here, drew the game. Yep. So do you see how well. recognizing key points like that is pretty easy to do? You just had to think about it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so I'll go ahead and speed through this, because it's probably just run down mid, like you said. Because you guys can't go anywhere, you can't do anything on the map. Jace gets caught. So yeah, the game's over. They can just... Yeah, okay. Yep, that is... So you, did, you do good in the fight, at least, right there. Um, I know that was just a small section, but like... Mm -hmm. That was the only chance you guys had. So, you doing that was the right play. Um, actually, you might have been able to do something there. Looked like you lagged or typed or something, but... It's, yeah, I thought it, it was unlikely that you could do anything, but there might have been yeah. a chance. Um, <laughs> okay. We just FF, yeah. So, that's the game then. So, um, what questions do you have, or what do you feel like I didn't do enough of? Uh, well, I think you did enough, because I now know what I should be doing at the start of a game, and in the middle of one especially. Uh. You've helped me enough with the jungle tracking and everything. Uh, I'll take that into account every single time. Yeah, so and, if you're not jungle yeah. tracking, you're trolling. Yeah, exactly. And if I'm not buying Tarvis, I'm trolling. Yes. Uh, but essentially, I should be more aggressive in how I play rather mm -hmm. than how defensive, as I literally never used exhaust, maybe like once or twice, but it's not enough. I need to use it as a summoner, not as a defensive spell. And use my ult in, well, basically test out how I can use my ult offensively rather than just defensively as well. That is what I think I've gained the most from this anyway. But, okay, cool. So uh, what other questions did you like? Because there's definitely something that I didn't cover or something that you have. Yeah. So like, what do you want to talk about? Uh, that's just... Uh, um, my mentality to get into play the game again. Like, I'm just not playing so at all recently. And it's just, uh, I don't know if that's because something outside of uh, League, but I think it's definitely something in League as well. Because like, I'm just not pressing play on so at I don't know why. Are you playing normal games? Yes. <laughs> Too many, I think. Is it ranked anxiety? Uh,. I doubt it is. So, because, I guess here's a better uh, question. Why do you not want to play ranked games? Or why can't you play ranked games? Probably because I care too much about my rank. Okay. So. You will drop ELO. It does happen. It will happen. Okay. You can streak to Masters and then drop back down to D4. Yeah. And Alternatively, yeah. you can be a consistent D3 player... And then streak down to D5. It goes both ways. So yeah. remember the ups and the downs. And you have to separate yourself from your rank and the game. Because if you want to play and climb ELO, you are going to win and lose games, obviously. You will not yeah. win every single game. So you can't obsess over the games that you might lose, but instead obsess over the games that you might win. See how it's different? Uh -huh.
because you have a controlling factor on if you win the game. And I just showed you a ton of them. Yep. You did. And that's really important to do because if you actively control the games, you won't be afraid of playing the games. But the way that you played this game was more like, oh, um, I'm just going to wait and respond and just play instead of I'm going to go and win the game. Very different mindsets. Every single game that I play, I say, how am I going to win? How? What am I going to do to impact the game to win? I don't think you had that mentality in these games. No, I didn't. In my ones to D2, I did. Nice. But in these ones, I just haven't. I just feel like, how do I not lose this rather than how am I going to win this? Yeah. It's a completely different animal because w when you're minimizing losses or when you're autopiloting um, or when you're like, when you're afraid of the game, you're not playing to win the game. You're playing to not lose. Yeah. And if you I want to climb to... and be a better player, you have to play to win, not to not yeah. lose. I have to be more proactive, be more, you know, like just go for it sort of sense rather than, yeah. oh, I'm going to play defensive. And because let's build. say you go for that play, right? And you make a mistake. And then you say, oh, that play didn't work because I failed my flash. Yeah. I guarantee that next time that play comes, you're going to be ready on your flash. Uh -huh. I will be. <laughs> and you learned something from that play. But when you're just sitting back, sitting AFK, and you're not doing anything, you're just like, oh, well, my team inted before I could do anything. Oh, GG. Or, like, you know, this is why people tend to recommend people don't play things like Gangplank, like Gazir, because you just have to sit AFK for 40 minutes. Yep. You're not going to be able to actively control the game unless you're significantly better than your elo. And if you're stuck in an elo, you're not significantly better than your elo. Nope. Like, it's really hard to say. They're like recognizing yourself, but like, that's the kind of stuff you need to do to climb. So I'm not saying you belong in your elo. That was just an example of other scenarios. Yeah, I know. Um, but like, there's definitely, definitely, definitely a difference between playing League of Legends and playing league of legends so last yes. night for example i taught jungle tracking to a gold player he was like holy you have map hacks you actually know where the jungler is the entire time if you do this i'm like yeah, yeah it's actually broken he's just like what i'm just like it's insane right i'm like if you can do that i guarantee you're a d5 player like, as long as you have at least some scope of mechanics. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, so then, I, I was playing in a tournament, right, guys? So, um, I will speak to this tournament a little bit. It was random um, team assignment. So, but it was, like, semi-random. So, like, you were distributed by your rank and, and stuff. So, the teams were semi-balanced. And uh, I won some RP. I'm going to be giving some, away some RP on the channel. Um, but the point of it was, my team was like, hey, can I go mid? And I was like... I think it would be best if I go mid because I'll be able to actively and proactively win the games. And they were like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, okay. I I'll just fill in an off roll. And he's like, can I play Azir support because I'm an Azir one trick pony? I'm like, mm, you know, dude, you do you. I'm not going to tell you no, but we have a better chance of winning if you just pick something a little easier. Anyway, the top laner was like, can I pick Quintop? I was like, yeah, sure. Do whatever you want, dude. And what I did was... Uh, I taught him what a slow push was. I was I shot called for him. I said, hey, um, can you slow push top this next wave by not killing all the minions, go ward the tri bush, and then go into their jungle and get a deep ward, and then go back to lane, and then... Or sorry, sorry, wait, I messed it up. It was the exact same scenario that I described to you earlier. So yeah, yeah. you deny the wave. You don't let them stop to the wave. You go ward. You build a slow push, and you go ward deeper. Or I told him to deny him from the wave, build up a slow push, then come mid and, and flash all this Malphite. And, and he was like, oh my god, you're a genius. I was like, 
No, I just know the map, <laughs> right? Like I, that doesn't take yeah. anything. It was just something that I that I'm actively able to do to win the game. So what else did I tell him? I told him in the late game. I said, "Hey, go top, kill only the caster minions, then come in group mid." He was like, "Why would I do that? I'm missing three CS." I'm like, "Trust me, just do it and come mid." And he was like, "Okay, fine, I'll trust you." Well, a minute and a half later, we we were mid. There was a fat wave of 20 minions here pushing this turret and he was like oh my what i was like well yeah that that's what you did by just not killing those melee minions he was like dude you're insane and the point of this is just to show these are active things that you can do to win the game and actually i kind of lost myself a little bit what was the full point of that uh what were we talking about <laughs> uh i'm about how to play in games or getting myself to playing games anyway like oh yeah playing to win you know, and and that's yeah, the kind of stuff that's playing to win you're setting up waves you're going to roam mid with alt you're you're getting deep vision you're roaming to the side with your jungler you're forcing objectives when you can you didn't play around a single objective all game like nope. you Not didn't all. force fights around dragon you didn't you didn't try to push mid turret like after you got the gank you did but like you didn't pressure it at all you like you roam top but they were unsuccessful because they were bad roams like overall like you were unlikely yep. to get things like even when echo died like he saw you you shouldn't have killed should. him yeah yeah like that's just playing to play you got to play to win that's the difference between playing league of legends and playing league of legends and i'm purposely doing with no inflection i think it's really important um mm -hmm. you can really see the difference once you think about it yeah i do know like looking at it now i should definitely think about what i'm doing instead of uh well why why i say i was thinking about what i'm doing was actually just autopiloting all that time yeah so Pretty what much. i would recommend you do i know you watch my stream a lot so i know yeah. you know of these concepts if you slowly apply one at a time you'll significantly improve your play yeah. so the next game you're not going to be able to jungle track perfectly. No, I'm not. But if you do it over the course of 30 games, I and will. that's the only thing that you change, you only try to apply jungle yeah. tracking, I guarantee you will master jungle tracking. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. After you master jungle tracking, master your warding. Or the reverse direction. Or maybe you choose wave manipulation. Maybe you choose team fight combo they're like team fight positioning pick an objective yeah. goal and then work towards it that is how you become the better player that proactively tries to win the game because all that stuff that is considered proactive for you that's not proactive for me anymore no. like it sorry yeah it is proactive play but it's not like i actively have to think and pause the game to be able to do this kind of stuff so like when i'm yeah. saying hey sejuani's bottom side right now like i left it up on the map but I would have said she's bottom side if I looked at the map or not, based yeah. on the conditions of the game. Yeah, and that literally took me a quarter second to realize, based on, oh, where'd she start? What time is it? Super simple stuff. And that becomes automatic. So now you start autopiloting those things, that really easy stuff, or rather, stuff become, you would now deem yeah. as hard. And then, and then second nature. It's second nature. And then games are just easy. People are like, how can you just like AFK in Diamond 3? Like, you're like, like what that doesn't make sense i'm just like well d3 is actually really bad but the point of the matter is that like you just know so much about the game that you can just have fun you can just play the game yeah just and that's what, what yeah that's why i have that practice account but like that doesn't take me active mental thought to do you know it's just like oh i know yeah. he's here because it makes sense and it's the same thing when you when you learn a new subject at school, right? Like the first time you learn cal calculus, I'm sure you're like, this is the hardest thing in the world. Oh, uh, I did, I and did then, have to learn it. And then you go two years later and you're doing like, um, you're doing like some other super complex math. Yeah. And then you're just like, wow, I was so dumb for thinking calculus was hard. It's just because you're you're exposed to it more. You're exposed yeah. to more things. You're you're a smarter person, etc. And that's what you need to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Do you have anything else? Uh, considering it's 
3.15 a.m. <laughs> Sorry about all, those, think, uh, all that yeah. earlier. Uh, no problem. Okay, cool. I'll, well, as long as this gets uploaded, I'll be up there so I can watch it again. Is yeah, it so um, speaking of all that, you know you can always message me if you have any questions. You have my Discord, yep. obviously. Um, anyone else can message me all their questions as well. Um, my Discord is an exclamation point Discord, and I do all this and upload it to YouTube, etc. So feel free to check a lot out if you're interested in this kind of stuff. I have a ton of VODs uploaded. George can definitely speak to those as he wanted to request one because of them. Um, so yep. with that, I will end the stream. Uh, have a great night, guys. Time to watch some Game of Thrones. Uh, His DMs are open. My DMs are open. Uh, please, no spoilers. What what day is today? Today's Sunday? Oh, yeah, it's Game of Thrones. So tomorrow is Monday. I have a coaching session tomorrow at 2 Central, 3 Central, something along those lines. I will update that in my Discord. And, um, yeah, have a good night, guys.